So, yeah, so we are here, uh, and we about to just talk about something, man, and I think, you know, we, we both can, uh, can, we both can chime in on. All right. All right, so, you, I'll let you start it off, man. I just want to see how you feeling. <laughs> how about that? I'm one? feeling good, man. Okay. I'm feeling good. I am on, uh, I'm on cloud 10. I can tell by that John Wick turtleneck. You know it. Yeah. Hey. Like you about to go kill something. You know it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And what about the kill? I mean, you don't I know. I mean, <laughs> you about to kill this podcast. Hey, <laughs> that's sure. what we about to do. For sure. Um, but yeah, so how you feeling? That's the question. I'm feeling really well. Swell, good. Yeah, all of the above. Yeah. Hey, nothing wrong with that at all, man. Nah. I remember the other week. We couldn't we couldn't come up because my my throat was sore. I was sounding kind of like Jadakiss, like yeah. top five that alive. Most definitely, but I'm, I'm feeling way way better. And you definitely went to Starbucks and got yeah medicine, medicine ball. ball. Yeah, shout out to Starbucks. Hey, if you if you get a sore throat, trying to tell you man, get that medicine ball. Yeah. It, it would it would do wonders for you. It may yeah. take some time. I mean, it's, yeah, it's for not, sure. It's not actual yeah, medicine, medicine no. but but it was definitely what I what I needed for the moment. Most definitely. That was Most cool. definitely. Thanks. Yeah, so so we back for another episode. So yeah. let's start us off, man. What we talking about today? What we gonna um, deal with for a few minutes? I wanted to talk about um what I heard my man um Mano on, on way up with Yee with Angela Yee. Okay, okay. He, he was talking about how he didn't not he he really couldn't afford the luxury of not being okay. Okay. Because it was you know it was like I'm not gonna call it a cliche because it's it's real, but people say it's okay. To not be okay, and I understand it wholeheartedly. Yeah, but he was like, "Yo, I really don't have that luxury to to not be okay." Yeah, and and maybe you know you got too many people that that rely on you, that need you to stay up, need you to stay strong, and yeah. in certain moments we don't really have outlets as to where we can reach out to people where we're a little more vulnerable, a little more not okay with things. But um, I totally understood him. In that in that space, most definitely. Um, so he said he didn't have the luxury, yeah, to, to not, not be okay. okay. Um, I, I think I think a little while back, I think we talked about on the uh, all black men need therapy. Mm-hmm. I think remember they said Fifty said he doesn't have the luxury to be able to go into a place of depression. Yeah, like you know, you you, you can't you don't have you don't have that that ability. True, and I I guess like they're not saying the same thing. No, nah. but they're both saying that those places are a place of feelings that they can't tap into because of who they are. But to me, like you need you need a safe place. True, you know what I mean, like you need you need. I must say that that. That soft pillow to lay your head, so to speak. True. So whether it's your lady or your therapist, that couch, it, it's something where you where you need to go to be able to get it off your chest. So is it okay to not be okay? Yeah, I think so. And and I I feel like in certain spaces you have to be with somebody who can protect your heart. So so, I mean, a lot of times I'm gonna go to scripture about certain things, but if the woman was made from your rib. Your rib cage is used, I mean, it was designed to guard your vitals, your internal yeah. organs, where, you're, where, you're, where you most need protection, where you're most vulnerable. And so in that, being my rib, I, I really need her to protect my heart and guard my vitals. So in safe spaces, you need somebody who's there that can guard that. And you can be, you know, Soft to a degree, but then at the same time, if you need to be hard, be hard too. But I I think, I think, like, even too, speaking from a black man's perspective, it's like we're looked at to be these superheroes all the time. So go see a therapist who doesn't have a dog in the fight. You feel me? Yeah, because I mean, I I think that's the thing, like, that's what he's saying. Like, he don't have the ability. The luxury to not be okay around his people, like 
Because some people are like the rocks so of your family. Some people, and he might be yeah. the financial backing. He might he mm-hmm. might be the one that's like the bread and the, yeah. and the butter. You For know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, but I mean, I think as a black man in general, I think too, we have tapped into this era where if you're not okay, you you consider to be emotional or True. you consider to be True. soft. You know what I'm saying? True. And and I think too that it makes us mask and and hide these feelings that we may have that may be true feelings because we don't be looked at as like a weaker a weak man so to speak and and i totally agree with that but that goes to me going back to that soft place if that soft place can't see you as both as either or when you need to be like that's that's on them that that's not a great thing and now check it. If, if let's say let's say a young lady never seen her dad cry, so now she's dating, and this dude had a moment and it broke him down. Oh, she could say he'll, she gonna, he'll say he'll pump. Yo, he's soft. Yo, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yo, I told the man up. Yeah, yeah. He'd be like, yo, but why did he break down? Yeah. Yo, he broke down because he lost a loved one, and you told him what man up? Yeah. Yo, that's all he had. Like, in his family, he might have had a strong, like, as far as, like, emotional foundation. Like, everybody was good. Yeah. Like, you could work on a car and still cry. Like, it's, it's both. Yeah. I ain't working on a car. But at the same time, <laughs> that don't mean I don't know how. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't mind being emotional. Right. But I know ain't nothing about me soft. Yeah. So, so my thing is just to know that I'm confident in who I am and whose I am. And and if you can't see the value in that, that's on you as a, as a person. But at the same time, if it, there's a safe place or a safe space as to where I can feel vulnerable, or I can feel open enough to conversate on that level or converse, which would be you know grammatically correct. Yeah. To be able to make sure that you feel me on all levels. You know what I'm saying? Now, with the bros, you might not have to get to that. It might not never get to that. Right, right. You're not going to let everybody see that. Right, side. right, right. It, it may not. But at the same time, somewhere, like I said, between your old lady or a therapist, generally speaking, those are the ones that either one is closest to you or one is paid to be, to be close to you. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> You're paid to be Yo, close. And, and they don't have a a good or bad to way to feel about it. Right. It just is. This is the way you feel and we're processing, we're getting through these things together. And so as a therapist, you lay on the couch or you sit up straight. I don't care how you get it out, get it out. Yeah. Because if it implodes, it it makes it bad on your body, your health. Yeah. If you you explode or you bleed on everybody around you. Yeah. You know, it just ain't good. Yeah. So, so to have that is is vital for as far as like for your own health. Yeah, you need that. Everybody needs that. Yeah. So, it's, if it's a sounding board, somewhere to vent, like sometimes you know, you you might gotta vent. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? But then sometimes, like you jump on a motorcycle and call it what? Win therapy. Yes, yeah, win therapy. You feel me? So, so wifey like to get on a slingshot and she go on the highway and, and, and air it out and she might yell because ain't nobody there to listen. Yeah. But at the same time, it's getting it out and everybody needs some type of outlet. You got to, man. And and I think too, sometimes too, we can we can go so long without letting it out mm-hmm. to the point where we do, people think something's wrong with us. Or we crazy or either. Or you like or this you nigga just angry emotional. black or, man. Yeah, like you just an angry black man or but yeah. people but, but I think too, as a black man, from him speaking from his perspective, mm-hmm. we deal with so much everyday life on top of yeah. being a father, on top of trying to make sure we're a good friend, on top of making sure we take care of ourselves, on top mm-hmm. of making sure we got, you know, we the we the strong shows for everybody to lean on. On yeah. top of making sure you know what I'm saying? Like sure. there's a lot of things on top of and then at the end of the day, you come to this point where it's like, you're not gonna get it unless you're in my shoes. Yeah. That that that's where that really comes yeah. into play. I feel you. Like you're not gonna feel it. Cause no matter no matter what ethnic background you may have, no matter, you know, who you may be, there's nothing like being a black man in America. Mm-hmm. 
even black women can't really relate to being no. a black man in America. No. You know, <laughs> you can't. Like, because, because it's different. It's very different. And, and yeah. we can't relate to black women, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end of the day, when you look at what black men have to deal with mm. in America, like, I mean, it's 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 almost mind-blowing because we are – the bottom of the total, the bottom of the totem pole, so to speak, but got to be the strongest out of everybody, so to yeah. speak. Because if you at the bottom, that kind of makes you, you know, what I'm saying foundational. Yeah. And it's crazy because you holding up a whole infrastructure. Yep. That that relies on you to stay strong, but your back hurt. Yeah. And some somebody told me one time it was like it's not the amount of the weight, it, it's how you carry the load. Yeah. Like, you could have a 50-pound dumbbell in your hand, but if you had it in a backpack on your back, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a difference. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a difference. It's easier to just distribute the weight. You yeah. can go a little further. You can make it, but it's but it's different. Yeah, it's most, it's most definitely different. And, and I think, too, like, just from, you know, when you see a black man acting out, a black man doing this, black man doing that, you know, we don't agree with it mm. because the fact of, of the, the gesture that's given – but at some aspect, you like, well, what did somebody do? Because right. we all not just walk around here angry. Yeah, for but sure. But it's, it's a reason why, you know, we act out the way we act out. Like, yeah. I told somebody the other day, I said, you know, you can you can create a monster rather than just, you know, want a monster. Yeah. Like, you know, you when you create one, yeah. you create that monster to end up being, like, either just off the handle, bad attitude, um, Jealous or whatever, but you created that monster. Mm. It's kind of like creating a bear. Like you know, mm. you create it. You create it. And so when something is created, it's not just. I, I don't think for us is that we can always say that we were born like this. We weren't. Mm. We weren't born with attitudes like. No. But it comes down because, as black people, they created us to be defensive. Yeah. But we really don't have to be. You know what no. I'm saying? Like yeah. they created us to feel like we gotta try to show and prove when we really don't have to. Mm-mm. We got to validate ourselves by trying to trying to do, like, like the post sent me the other day about um, uh, a few minutes ago, you know, about the guy who's saying that, you know, the rich stay rich, what? you know what I'm saying, by living poor. Yeah. And the poor stay poor by living rich. Yeah, for by sure. trying to look rich. You know, so it's like, yeah. but that's what we do, though. As, yeah. as a black America, we walk around here, the man said he'd rather have a $5,000 bag with $100 in it. Well, he'd rather have a, a plastic bag with five thousand dollars, five thousand dollars in it, and they have a five thousand dollar bag with a hundred dollars in it. Yeah, for sure. But we rather have a five thousand dollar bag because it feel like we done something. Yeah. But I mean, I, th- it goes back to the same thing because we, yeah. it's it's not a, we don't feel like it's not okay for us not to have the best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's not okay for us to be, I want to use the word complacent, but just to be like, all right, we just, we we living pretty good. Yeah. Now nah, we got we got to, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and sometimes it makes us. But we end up being poor, yeah. while the rich ain't doing nothing but getting richer. Yeah, for sure. But it's it's like trying to figure a way out. Yeah, there, there's there are ways out, and there's multiple ways out. It's not really like a maze where there's one exit. There, it's mo- it's multiple exits. It's just that your choices are like so different per person. Yeah, like like I've seen I've seen other um, ethnic backgrounds and nationalities live together mm-hmm. in the same house until their daughters get married or their sons get married and move out and they get their own house. But they help each other pay the mortgage off so they can go buy another crib. Yeah, that is. And it's multiple ethnicities except for us yeah. because we were almost, uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know if it was trained or thought, but sometimes we felt it personally. When I turn 18, I got to get out. Or when you turn 18, right. <laughs> you, you got to go. Yeah. So it's it's either or, but yeah. I don't know where that comes from. I don't even I know think, why. I think it's a learned behavior, man. But to me, it's other cultures that say, yo, stick around. Yeah. Yo, you help pay this joint off. Or better yet, yo, pay me rent for your room. Yeah. So, and do it for five years. Yeah. And I'm going to save that money so that when you get to move out, they get your down payment right there. On your crib, yeah, and now that he, is true, man. He's setting you up for success. I, I I tried to do that like with 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 two of my older ones. I ain't really bother with the last two because it didn't work the first two times, which was crazy. <laughs> but somewhere along the line, they feel like it's their money, and right. I was saving it the whole while. 
But somewhere along the line, they decided, you know, that was their bread. and Yeah. Hey, okay. But why is it that we feel that way, though? I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's all, something all this intrinsic. still goes back to what he said. Right. Like, because at the end of the day, when you do, like, our, our culture, we don't think about generational wealth. We Sometimes that's cliche. Sometimes that's real cliche. Because it, it's so easy to say generational wealth. But it's 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 a whole other thing to kind of like. But look what you just said right there, though. You just said if you t- if your daughter would have paid rent to you for five years, they would have ended up, you know, having a down payment for that house. They in return, in return, Little Russ, you know, Little Razor, my shout guy. out Little Razor. My guy. <laughs> Little Razor would have been, you know what I'm saying? If you would have done the same thing to his mom, you know, like, yeah. then it keeps going. But see, that's those traits that we don't pass down. Right. Now, we'll pass down the trait, like, you know, when you turn 16, we got to have a sweet 16 party. We yeah. got to do it all. We got to have all these balloons. Oh, yeah. we got to buy you a car. Where did that come from? Right. Like, what do we got to buy you a car when you turn 16? Yeah, <laughs> right. drive what I got. You, you don't want to drive. You don't want to drive you, your You don't want no car, car payment. Right. You don't, don't want to pay that insurance. None You're of like, that. Where did that come from? I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's these things that we do. I think it's just it's the things that we do without even knowing why we do them. Yeah. Like, my, my little grandson, he, he bought the house, his own business, and he won. Yeah. But but he had the vending machines, so so even if that turns into a little savings for him, yep. he'll have something, yep. you know. And, and it's a business, and you start something. To me, that's generational. Yep. Because you set him up that. as an entrepreneur early. Yep. You set him up to succeed early, mm-hmm. and this isn't based on his willingness. Mm-hmm. This is based on what he's being taught along the way. Mm-hmm. Not I need half that check. Yeah. And I told them when I, you know, I was getting half they check. They, for some reason, they need their money back. Right. Okay, take your money. But now it's like you learn, you learn more, you earn more. Yeah. You figure out different ways to do it. And like now, if you have the vending machines, now he's still gonna have to stock them. He's still gonna have to learn how to. At one year old. For, not yet, but no, he'll walk around and collect or get some bubble gum out. <laughs> He gonna he gonna he figure something. something out, right? He gonna see him at least yeah. every time he see him, and, and look, this is yours. Look, this is yours. Mm-hmm. This is a piggy bank. Mm-hmm. This is yours. This is your mm-hmm. business, and that in turn changes the mindset. That, so where, where the business where the vending machines gonna be at? At the new sweet life. <laughs> at the new I mean, sweet life. Yeah, so listen, if, if yeah. you if you need <laughs> at the new sweet life, yeah, for sure. Shameless plug, new sweet life. Yeah, coming. With the vending machine in there. Spring 2024. Spring 2024, new sweet life. It's crazy. Coming. That's crazy. Yo, it's crazy because last year I just had one. Yeah. Yo, but God is great. I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, you and know. then you got two. For sure. But, um, yo, that was, I almost got emotional right there on I mean, camera. It's, but, see, but see, that's the thing, though. And like, I was cool with it. Because because of the fact that you're actually doing something that's far more greater. Like, sure. I think I heard TDJ say this one time. TDJ okay. said, "Shout out to leave the bishop. It, leave it in the hands for your children. It's not what you leave for them; it's what you leave in them." I go with that. You see, like, yeah, and, and, and you you're leaving it in the hands just because of the fact you're putting his mind already. Like, you could be a business owner. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like. Automatic. Yeah, all day long. Automatic. But why? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes we have these struggles because of the fact we work for other people. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, we, we we get tied down to this nine to five modern day slavery. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, they don't want us to think outside that box. Like, we could do any, you know what I'm saying? We okay. could do any better. Mm-hmm. And so they trying to lock us in, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I get it because, shoot, locked in is locked in because y'all pay the bills. For sure. But if we came together, man, do you know how smart we are? Yeah, like, I look at some of these videos on Instagram and see some stuff we do. I'm like, now, it'd it be the most dumbest stuff. Like, let's say, you know, two, a man and a woman got together and stole $3.5 million in life insurance. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, you, you that smart? Like, you couldn't take that and and, and build a IT company yeah, or something. did something. Like, yeah. we are so smart, bro. I agree. Sometimes too smart 
But at the same time, it's how you use it. Like, because the brain is crazy powerful. Right. But then sometimes you could, it could be a, a tomato can. It could be something regular. Like, it could be a pin cushion. It could be a hat rest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your, your head, as far as, like, the the mental and to be able to stretch the capacity of your mentals is is amazing. And some people don't. Some people do. Yeah. Some people maximize it. Some people just do the bare minimum. And they cool with that. And I can't, you know, I'm I'm cool with it if, if you cool with it. Yeah. Like, if, if all you want is this, that's fine. That's all you can get, though. But that's that's fine because that's all they desire. Mm-hmm. If you desire greater and you find a way to do it the right way, I mean, what, I mean, what's the right way? You know, for some people, they, they right. feel like any way is just getting it. Yeah. Getting to it is the right way. But getting after it and, and not doing it the correct way. Like, I've seen people have tax trouble just because they didn't do it the right way. Yeah. So, so somewhere along the line, they had ambition, but their drive kind of carried them to another direction. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you figure out things as you go, but you want to do it the right way so that you can succeed. That's good, man. Yeah. That's good, bro. I, so, I, I, think, I, de- I think, I definitely think that, you know, it's important that we, we definitely know how to not be okay when we're not. Yeah. Because is there a proper way to not be okay? Is there a wrong way to not be okay? Mm-mm. I don't, I don't know what that would look like because it's hard to say because somebody that doesn't have an avenue or an outlet, like I said previously, you, you may bleed on everybody around you. You're going to. You see what I'm saying? So I, I'd rather there be some type of, what you call it, a relief valve? Yeah. So like when when the steam gets too steamy, and and the pressure cooker is is kind of like blowing you up. Yeah. You need a release. Yeah. You need a release. Sometimes it could be the gym. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes and, it could be the gym. It could be boxing. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Get blowing that steam off. To go running. Yeah. You have to do that. Like, yeah. I, and I I feel like too sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we become so, like, busy and bogged down with life. Um, and sometimes they make us so busy. Like you, mm-hmm. you, you look at the cost of living now. For sure. You look at the cost of everything, mm-hmm. not just living, but cars, food, um, just everything that that we that we have to do every day in life. Children. Yeah. yeah. Like I mean, it's expensive now. Yeah. So therefore, instead of us being able to blow off that steam, we had to get two jobs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we got to work a nine to five, and we got to work a a late night joint, yeah. like a part time, seven, seven to eleven. Yeah, like I mean, and and, and it, like you said, I don't think you know you, you didn't say this, but I'm think you're thinking about it. It wears us down, mm. and eventually it wears, it wears down so much to the point where we um we don't have time to let off the steam. That might be what kind of what he was saying. Like yeah. he don't have the pleasure, the he don't have the luxury, yeah. he doesn't have the ability, he doesn't have the time because yeah. end of the day, if he don't make it. Yeah. The children ain't gonna make it. Right. Like you, you know don't what I'm saying? It. The family ain't gonna make it. It happen. won't get done. Yeah, like I mean, I have this saying where I, sometimes for my kids I think like this, like I am the option. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. and, and I think about that cause, cause I am I'm, I'm I'm the father. Like they ride they ride off my they ride off the backs of their parents. You know, so um a lot of times, okay, at their age. At their age. Okay. Yeah, I at their that. age. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am the option at their age. Right. Now, that, right. that's going to be a, become a, a time when they do, yeah. you know, get old enough where they can, they, they can do their own thing. Yeah, yeah. But that's the whole point of me setting them up for that. For sure. And, and once they have options, I'm still a listening ear. Yeah. Because I don't want you to just choose without having somebody to say that's a good choice. You know, or this is a right. better choice. Right. Or that's a bad choice. Right. And now you still have the choice. Right. But I'd suggest. Right. You see what I'm saying? And so, like, even in that kind of space, they have the opportunity to be like, you know, he did he did at least listen. You yeah. Know, he did care enough. You know, and so even in those spaces, like, you know, it's sometimes your kids make choices that you don't approve of. Yeah, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? And then you ain't okay with that. Yeah. But you have to be okay. With not being okay with their choice, mm-hmm. and so life, life be life and still, but 
yo, you gotta you gotta kind of roll with the punches sometimes, and you don't have the luxury. Yeah. But then at, at the same time, it's best to try to find an avenue to have that luxury. Have to, man. Mm-hmm. And so I, I agree with with him at the same time, but I love for him to find the space as well. Yeah, and I hope I hope he I hope he definitely does because. You know, not not having that luxury could really be tough on any man. Yeah, any and, person. And and, and I, I feel like in the professional setting, it was kind of taboo at one point in time, but now it seems like everybody got a therapist. Yeah, I mean, I don't, but I I don't care if somebody did. I, I think yeah. it'd be beneficial, and I'd love for them if they if they felt like they needed one. Yeah, yo, it's I, okay to go ahead and yeah, yeah please by yeah, all get means get your therapist, man. Yeah, for sure. You might need one if you feel like you don't need one. That's when you need one. Yeah, you know or, what I'm saying? Like, or, or you need somebody to talk to. Yeah, that listen in a judgment free zone, that, and it's that a confidant. Way. Yeah, for sure. And I'm not gonna take your mess and running around. Yeah. Put it in the streets. Yeah, put it in the streets. Cause niggas, sell niggas it, will sell it. Sell it to TMZ. Yeah, because you know. jokers will like you know, and that, that's another thing too. I think for black people, we become so scared to share because we've been bitten in the back so many times. Yeah. Like especially coming out of certain personal information, mm-hmm. certain things you know, like. You know that you share with somebody, like you shouldn't worry about that being, you know, told or yeah, somebody says something. Sure. But, but jokers do it all the time. All the time. Yeah. But at the same time, it don't make it right. No, it don't make it right, man. And so it causes people to not feel like they have yeah. a safe space to not be okay. Yeah, because we feel like we can't be okay, especially with each other. Yeah, for sure. And if anybody should be able to hold each other up, it should be we should be able to hold each other up, like. Yo, you come to me, bro, I need to you about something. All right, cool. Yeah. Now you wonder when you leave, like, I wonder if you could tell somebody. Like, nah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm t- and I'm going to tell you what's crazy, though. It's like that. And and I'm going to tell you where it's like that, when people have been let down before. Yeah, most definitely. And when they open up, they may open up in part, but not in the whole because they feel like, you might let me down, too. Mm-hmm. You might, so I'm going to really kind of, like, put it out there a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, but at the same time, it's like, yo. We'll see what happens. And, and I, it's, it's different. And you, you should be able to, you know, and it takes time. Sometimes years to, to really feel like you can confide in somebody. Yeah. You know? Because you really have to have trust, man, in that person. That, that's why I said um, if, you, if you feel like you don't got nobody like that, go, go pay somebody. Because yeah. cause they don't care one way or the other. No, they go they, home. They want you to get what you need. Yeah. They don't care about your personal business. That's yeah. that's my thing. And that's the thing, like, you know, when you tell somebody something personal and that person takes it and they just kind of mishandle it, so yeah. to speak. Um, Dudes be pillow talking. Oh, yeah. Telling their peoples and then their peoples tell their yeah. girlfriend and then now they snickering when they look at you and mm-hmm. you, when you walk by and you be like, mm-hmm. yo, how you doing? They be like. <coughs> yeah, they laughing. Yeah, and, 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 and you think it's cool, right? Like, because sometimes it makes people look like they got the upper hand. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but at the end of the day, the thing I understand about the thing I understand about it is, if you share your information with somebody else, if you talk, I, I say this: if you talk to me about somebody, you talk to somebody about me. That's real. To to a degree, and and it depends on the level of the conversation. Yeah, like I'm saying, like you tell me something that's like. Mm-hmm. You know, like top top secret, so yeah, to speak. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like you. something personal. Oh, I know you do the same thing. <laughs> you yeah. do the same thing about and me. To a degree. Yeah, you're about right. That, that, that's about how I feel about yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? But Yeah. I think hey. um, it depends on the situation. Now, check this. Check this. I, I've seen times where somebody be like, yo, keep your boy in prayer. Yeah. Because this was going on. Yeah. But then it was like. It's, it's borderline like <laughs> telling his business. You might have just say, keep your boy in prayer. Hey, Bingo. Pray, pray for your boy, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What's going on? No, nah, he's good. Just yeah, pray just for keep him. him in prayer. That, that type of thing. Not, yo, keep your boy. If anybody come to me and say, yo, keep your man rest in prayer, like, you know, just, you know how they said it. <laughs> you know how they said it. Too. Hey, no, nah, so like, keep him in prayer for real. You like, he be like, what? What are you talking about? Like, right. I'm going to call you be like, yo, yo. Yeah, everything what good? <laughs> yeah, now, now, I will say that, though. If we boys and somebody yeah. comes to some Timmy, yeah. I'm going to call you. Yeah. I'm going to call the but, source. But my thing is, if I felt like you should have knew, I would have told you. Yeah. So why would somebody else know before you if you my man? Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? 
Like, so to me, that's crazy. Like, I, I've seen, you know, you see a lot of different joints, but like, i seen times when, when wifey be like, yo, you know such and such. I be like, yeah. Yeah. Well, why you ain't, yo, I, t- t- yeah, like, I yo. said, you know, you know what we always say? Uh. Um, they, somebody said they're about to tell you something, and you be like, oh, you did I say, and don't tell nobody what I'm telling you. Yeah. All right, yeah, I got you. I ain't going to tell nobody. Yeah, for sure. And then soon, yeah, <laughs> as soon as they got the phone. Somebody. Yo, yeah, don't, don't tell nobody I told you this because they told me yeah, not to tell yeah, nobody. Don't, like, nobody. It's me, you, and the wall. <laughs> me, you, yeah. and the Lord. Man. But, like, when wifey don't know, I know I ain't tell nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then when she find out months later, a year later, and she'll ask me, like, yo, did you know that? I was like, yeah. But she'd be like, yo, why you didn't? Who was I going to tell Russell? <laughs> right, right, right. But I'd be like, yo, they told me not to. And I covered them in print and I left it. I yeah. left it right there. I probably got to. I probably didn't remember it until you brought it back up. Yeah. Like, because if anything, that's where I'm going to leave it. Yeah. it. I don't want it to weigh me down. Yeah. And a lot of counselors get weighed down with stuff if they don't know how to properly discard it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, if you need, to, like me, you know, I'm going to throw it up. I'm going to let him handle it. Yeah. I'm going to throw in the lob, let him dunk it. Like, I mean, like you, you, that, 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 that's 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 another reason why we as just people in general in general are scared to trust anybody because yeah. you know all of us been hurt some some point yeah. sometime you know so you have been hurt man listen go get you a therapist man go get yeah. you a therapist go talk to somebody go sit on somebody couch whether it's a therapist couch whether it's a, your homeboy couch yeah. homegirl couch somebody couch yeah whether it's in the car whatever yeah get it out man. Yeah, Get it out. Sure. I guarantee you it will help you 10 times over. Yeah. It will help you. I'm going to tell you another joint. Write it Write it down on a piece of paper. Yeah, journal it. Yeah. You write it down, and then you, you put it up. Maybe write it and put it in a notebook. Write it out. Do it. Out. Get it out. Yeah. That's my thing. If you get it out, fold it up, put it in an envelope, seal it, date it, and then you might be able to go back to those moments mm-hmm. or even – if the person who was really like causing the the issue can read the letter to know how you was feeling during those moments where you really couldn't express it without becoming, you know, a, a, a worse version of yourself. Yeah. They may know exactly how you felt in that moment and healing could take place like that. Yeah. So it's, it's so many different ways to kind of like channel that frustration of not being okay. But it's, you know, it's okay to not be okay, man. Yeah. Just try to get the okay right if you can, whatever way you can. For sure. Whatever you can handle it. It's another show. Oh, yeah. And, man, until next time, we out. All right. Peace.